This is Denver 7 On Demand. Good evening, I'm Shannon Ogden. Colorado's 43rd governor loves to point out his trademark blue sneakers, and he says he's hitting the ground running. And with today's ambitious State of the State address, he seems to be living up to his word, or at least trying to. Let's start with education first. The governor wants to see free, full-day kindergarten for every child by this fall. Right now, the state only requires to offer half day. On to health care now. He wants to lower prices for prescription drugs, possibly from Canada, and he's calling for the immediate creation of an office that will help lower hospital costs and other medical bills. There's more. As a first step on our budget package uh, coming up next week on the 15th, uh, I will be including a formal request to provide parental leave for all state employees. The governor also spoke at length about tax reform and took a few jabs at President Trump. Now, on this topic, which was a little less detailed, he offered one plan for leveling the playing field for Coloradans. It's time to cap the vendor fee, which is a giveaway to the largest, most influential and profitable retailers in the nation, and use the savings to lower tax rates to benefit small businesses and millions of working Colorado families. Governor Polis covered a lot of ground today, and we're going to keep a close eye on all of his promises to see what pans out over his term. So that's the state of the state. Now let's talk about the state of the Broncos. New coach Vic Fangio introduced today, and boy, did he make an impression. He is a no-nonsense, no-excuses type of leader. He also made it clear that penalties and blown assignments will not be accepted. And he said... He can even make Von Miller better. Broncos' other two big storylines remain unresolved. Fangio would only say Case Keenum is currently the quarterback. He declined to say what role also former head coach Gary Kubiak will be playing in this upcoming season. So we hope you enjoyed today's warm weather because, hey, guess what? It's changing a lot. Look who's here. It's Stacy with snow yes. news. 61 degrees for a high today. Tomorrow, temperatures only in the mid-30s with snow that will last from the morning all the way through the evening. We're expecting about 2 to 4 inches of snow here in Denver, but then we clear it right up for the weekend. Lots of sunshine on the way, and we'll be in the low 50s as we head into the beginning of next week. Thank you, Stacy. Our Colorado is filled with stories of cities, big and small, grappling with all this growth. But in Inglewood, locals are worried the added development could actually be dangerous. Denver 7's Jackie Cray explains. Inglewood resident J.J. Marjada is a familiar face around the city. He's at every Inglewood City Council meeting asking questions as he notices the changes around him. We're having tremendous growth in this area, and we know Colorado's growing. But the problem is that it's happening without any checks and balances. One of his biggest concerns is the fear that the city's aging infrastructure can't handle the dozen or so development projects in the works and several possibly on the horizon like this proposed multi-unit apartment complex, Alta Inglewood Station, not far from the city center. With the newer style buildings, was the infrastructure built? Was the drainage system built? Was the traffic patterns built to be able to handle this? Oh my goodness. Just last summer, a deadly flood overwhelmed the drainage system. Daisy Yu with the city of Inglewood says they're actively looking at a fix. We have to continue development in order to keep up with the growth of our city. But at the same time, we are taking steady and measures to research what additional repairs our aging infrastructure needs. She says the developer for the Altus site already planned for an underwater retention pond so there will be space for sewer and drainage systems. Also, at 34,000 residents, Inglewood's water plant isn't even operating at half of its max capacity. So there's plenty more room to accommodate more growth, she says. Our proximity to the city of Denver sets up really well for an influx of new residents while still maintaining um, the community and the great place that it is to live for our existing residents. In Inglewood, Jackie Crea, Denver 7. This has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later. We'll have another one for you. And download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.